Hello and welcome to another episode of Meta Sidekicks. My name is Liv and this is the podcast where I talk about all things spiritual, metaphysical, paranormal, and in between because as a professional psychic medium, that is my goal. Am I a person that is an expert in all of these things? No, but <laughs> I do talk to dead people and uh, they have taught me a lot and that is what I'm aiming to share with you as well as just my like personal special interests in certain areas of metaphysicality and spirituality and all things paranormal so you know been on ghost investigations uh talk to a lot of living and dead people <laughs> also talk to animals plants houses i just you know as a medium my one of my sole purposes is to channel the energy of things whether they be alive or dead and get information from them and that that is what i'm here to share with you today so I have been trying to be more present in life in general, something I talked about in the last podcast. And one of the ways in which I've been trying to do this is writing things down that actually pop into my head. <laughs> and as someone who struggles with ADHD, it is hard for me to have object permanence with like my phone and my computer, which I know is hilarious because as a content creator, I always have my phone and my computer is very close to me at all points in time. And, uh, you know, so many people are like, just write things down on your notes app or take a voice memo. I honestly want to learn how to use voice memos a little bit better, but it's hard for me because of the object permanence. So I've been trying to not just... I don't know. I guess another thing I struggle with too, living in the age of being a 90s baby and then having your parents that are like, don't be on your computer all the time. Don't be on your phone all the time. Now as an adult myself, I'm like, don't be on your computer all the time. Don't be on your phone all the time. And it's hard to find the balance between work and just normal existing. So when things pop into my head, I'm like, oh, I, I can't put that down on my phone or I need to like write it down somewhere else. So as I've been having more sort of spiritual epiphanies that come about naturally from things that I am educating myself on and more so from the private readings that I hold with lovely people and the souls of their past loved ones who are just very profound. Um, I've been trying to write down those things that happen or that I experience during these readings. And that is one of the things I wanted to share today. So last week we covered finding home within yourself and like experiencing new waves of grief. That is something that spirit has been helping me to better understand. And I have been wanting to cover this topic that we're going to cover today, which is suicide that like, I just haven't figured out how I've wanted to cover it, but it's been nagging my mind. So I wanted to talk about the things that I have experienced as a medium and my abilities and how they're changing in relation to my idea of suicide when it comes to being a medium who talks to the souls who have passed that way. So if that's something you're not ready to talk about or don't want to listen to, that is fine. This is not the podcast episode for you, but there is 166 other podcast episodes that might be for you. However, I did find what this soul had to say that I've recently talked to extremely healing, and perhaps maybe this podcast episode will also be healing for you. So before I get into what I want to talk about, I'm going to give a little life update because people enjoy to li I don't know why, but people enjoy listening to me outside of being a, a medium and things like that as well. So that is what I'm going to talk about. If you do not want to listen to the garble of my life, <laughs> then there will be a timestamp below in the description or the show notes and you can click past the life update. It'll say lives life update and go to the meat and potatoes of the podcast. But without further ado, this is what I've been up to. Man, I don't know. I feel like I don't have any like fun, cool, spiritual things to share with you guys that I've been experiencing. I don't know. I've really been just trying to learn about moon magic. And <laughs> that's literally just where the word, like where the universe has kept me because I've been trying to sequester time away for myself to learn more about moon magic. 
but it's it's hard. So the closest that I've gotten recently is just being able to try and go outside at least once in the evening, uh, either with my family or by myself once the baby has gone to bed and just see what phase of the moon is happening and what the energy feels like to me. But I should honestly keep like a little journal because, uh, you know, I get a lot of information just intuitively as a medium about things that people have already sort of categorized. And it's interesting to feel the energy around yourself and then write it down and then realize that other people have these same exact feelings about things, but you didn't know about them. So I think perhaps maybe what I'll try to do is similarly with being present in writing the things that happen down or pique my interest or filter through my mind as a medium during the day and through readings, I will try to do the same thing when I feel the energy of each moon phase. Because I know when it comes to moon magic, each phase of the moon has a certain like energetic potential in your practice of witchcraft, whatever it is that you decide to do with like intentions and things like that. Like new moons are supposed to be something and then like waxing moons are some other sort of energy. But last night, last night, last night's moon was like not quite halfway full or just maybe a little bit more than halfway full, something like that. But it gave me a very sort of like solid, hopeful, knowing energy, I guess, of like if you were to ask the energy of the moon or the moon beings that exist, whatever, whoever they may be, they would be like, listen, girl, boy, whatever, <laughs> you have the answers that you need right now and you just feel like you'd have to ask other people questions for clarification, but it was very much like a magician card energy of you're asking questions and for guidance from someone, but you have everything that you need to keep moving forward for the rest of the month. And that was sort of the energy that the moon gave off to me and this like half full sort of, uh, I don't know, phase that it was in. So Mm, what else has been going on? I really want to go to the Ren Fair. <laughs> That's been that that is going on. Oh, my birthday's next Wednesday too. I'm really excited about that. I'm a Leo baby. Like literally the last day of Leo season, the 24th. But the Renaissance Fair, also, I just learned that Ren Fair is short for Renaissance Fair. My friend loves to go to Renaissance Fairs and she's like, I'm going to the Ren Fair. And I was like, is that a bird? You're going to look at birds? <laughs> literally my freaking ideas and then I figured that I didn't like Riz Riz is short for uh charisma no one told me that so anyways I'm just am I an old person probably do I need to get out more also probably but I want to go to the renaissance fair because not only do I love it because there's like funny shows and everyone's dressed up but I think it would be fun to get like a reading by someone else that is supposedly a psychic or a medium the last time that I tried to get a reading by someone that said that they were medium, I literally asked them to their face. I was like, woman, I talk to dead people. Do you talk to dead people? Because I need to find someone that can talk to my dead people. And she was like, yeah, sure. And it was the biggest waste of $60 in my entire life. And that was just the universe's way of showing me what it feels like when people are upset, when they get readings from people that are actually charlatans or snake oilers. I understand now for everyone that is listening, I have had my experience where I cried, not because they were happy tears because this woman gave me an excellent reading, but it was because I was so frustrated that someone tried to finesse any sort of information that came out of my mouth or body language that I had to make me have the impression that they were talking to someone that I knew of and they were not at all in any way shape or form I was just so like bitterly angry and upset it just I get it that was you know living lives is learning the difference between sympathy and empathy up until that point I only had sympathy for people that were like I'm nervous to get a reading with a medium because I feel like a lot of mediums in the world aren't actually mediums now I have the empathy, the understanding, the experience. So I think it would be cool to go to the Ren Fair, not only to find someone that can maybe give me a really cool medium reading, um, but also my son, Oak, I have a baby. If you're a new listener, he's almost 11 months old, which is crazy to think about, but he loves people. <laughs> he is a little 
These are his signs. He's Virgo, Gemini, Sagittarius, and he is just a little people watcher. My husband and I took him to the aquarium and he did not care about the dolphin show that was happening. He just wanted to watch all of the people. And actually, earlier this week on Wednesday, I went to a funeral for um, a great uncle who passed on my husband's side of the family. And he just... It's so important to have children at funerals. And I know that might seem like crass to say, but I think it's important for people to feel that life continues on when it feels like life has ended or life is falling apart. Because Oak just had so much fun meeting his great, great aunts and uncles, his great aunts and uncles, and then just, you know, other people that even I haven't met from my husband's side of the family. And it was interesting to have not only the oldest family member on my husband's side of the family in the room who had just passed, but also my son, who is the youngest of the entire family. And I just thought that was kind of interesting. He was having a good time schmoozing on his great greats and his greats and uh, making friends and making people laugh and feel better. And I don't know, it was just cool. So I want to take him to the Ren Fair so that he can look and enjoy all all of the people that are just absolutely dressed up to the nines talking in in like co- like character and costumes and just I think he would absolutely just adore going to the Renaissance Fair and it would be a great time to get like huh, they make really good pastries at the Renaissance Fair they got giant mutton legs which isn't actually mutton it's just giant turkey legs but they're like slow roasted and delicious my goodness so I think that would be a good time. And I'm hoping that that's something that we can do. So that is everything that's new in my life currently. And uh, without further ado, let's get into the actual podcast topic. All right. So I have had so many people ask me like while I was pregnant and now after postpartum, if pregnancy or becoming a mom has changed my mediumship. And I honestly have not been able to answer this question at all. And I don't think that it it really applies in this scenario because it's something that I still want to think about and chew on before I make a podcast on it. But I do think that my idea of mediumship and the direction I want to take my abilities has changed because of being pregnant. But a lot of the like... I don't know. I've been doing this for almost four years now professionally, and I've always been a medium since I was little, but I think doing private readings and getting to meet people from all over the world and just learning a lot of different things, going on ghost investigations, talking to souls from other places has really changed and developed my abilities in a new way. And if you guys are new, this is the first time or the first podcast that you're listening to, Everyone has psychic abilities. You have psychic abilities because you are a living human being. (laughs) You also have your five physical senses, right? Your five physical senses are going to be synonymous to your six metaphysical senses. And if you have five physical senses, why wouldn't you have six metaphysical senses? They're just mere images of each other in a sense. So those are going to change in your life just like your five physical senses are going to change over time in your life as well. Your eyesight gets worse, your hearing gets better, whatever. Some people are super sensitive to smells. Other people are very sensitive to touch or sound. That is what I'm talking about. And I have realized that, I don't know, just professionally from the experiences I've had both personally and professionally, my mediumship is starting to change and my perceptions of things that I once thought about are beginning to change. One of those ideas which we talked about last week was that just, how do I explain this in a better way? One of the things that we talked about last week was how people's perceptions of spirituality, if they are not the same, does not mean that they are wrong. Because spirituality is the interpretation of energy. It's not like handing someone a box and everybody knows that a box is a box. So if you say that the box is not a box, it's not a box and you're wrong. Like it's like the Rorschach test of like an ink blot. Someone's like, what does this look to like to you? And some person might see a flower and another person might see a crown or a sun, whatever. They're not wrong. It's just their interpretation of that ink blot. 
we used the idea of a chair. If a chair or a table, I think it was a table, if a table's in the room, if someone's looking at the top of the table and another person's looking at the bottom of the table and another person's looking at the leg of the table and each one of those people describe that portion of the table, someone might not understand if you're only telling them about that portion or that aspect of the table that as a whole, it is a table, but it also doesn't mean that those, those people are wrong. Those are just the portions or perceptions of that object that they're seeing. So is it a table at the end of the day? Yes. Are those people wrong? No, they're just seeing whatever catches their eye in respect to what that table is. So I just, I don't know. I think that's important to think about when you're learning about spiritual concepts and metaphysicality in and of itself, or when people are talking about their paranormal experiences. But one of the things that I've been learning and what I wanted to talk about was, and I guess maybe a little bit on how all of this ties in, is suicide. Em and I, my business partner, had a podcast. It was our seventh podcast that we ever released, Making Meta Psychics, and it is titled, Do Heaven and Hell Exist? And in that podcast, we talk about how we do not believe that hell exists, only heaven does. And that hell is not like, you know, because in different religions, hell is like a different place than heaven. But it was from my understanding before I'd really done a lot of like a lot of one on one private readings just with people. It was my understanding from my mom who had done a lot of private readings for people that hell does not exist. However, when we pass, we no longer have our five physical senses, see, touch, taste, hear, smell, because we don't exist in a physical plane of existence. We're a soul, we're energetic. So when we're in heaven, we gain the ability to know, see, hear, and feel everything. So that's why if you ever had a reading with a medium and they brought up something that has happened, hasn't happened, or might happen, and then they were getting that information from a soul or a spiritual being, that's why. It's because those souls are privy to that information and the medium was conveying what they were telling them. Because the medium doesn't know that intrinsically. We don't know anything. We have to get our information from a soul or spirit. So it was always my impression or my understanding what I was taught from what my mother had told me was that if you commit suicide or if a soul commits suicide, you they don't go to hell. There is not a hell. That is, there's not like a place where bad people go or people that make unsavory decisions in some sort of religious sense. And we're not talking about the religious sense either, but it was her understanding from doing readings that since souls know, see, and feel everything, that when they pass, if someone takes their own life, they are now privy to the pain and sorrow and heartbreak that they have caused people from the actions that they've taken against their own life. So is that like a hell? It could be. But I just like, when I used to speak to souls who had passed because they had taken their own lives, they used to come into me a certain way. So as a medium, when we say that we talk to the dead, we don't necessarily talk. It's not like you and me, unless you're like Doris Stokes. Doris Stokes was Claire audience. So she would hear actual like souls talking to her. That was just her thing. She was extremely clear audience. So she would hear actual um, sentences and vocabulary and words coming from people's mouths as souls. So that's not how my gifts work. I get more of a menagerie of senses. So I will get thoughts, images, feelings, and emotions that I recognize is not my own. And between that sort of psychic charade, I will be able to understand what it is that souls are conveying to me. So I had certain ways that souls would communicate or convey to me that they had taken their own lives. But that's changed now. <laughs> and it's so odd for me to talk about so when souls who had committed suicide used to come in when I was talking to them, they would come in with their head down. They would have a sort of ashamedness to them. Um, and I would have that overwhelming sense of just sadness and accountability for their actions. Does that make sense? A sense of accountability, but in that melancholy sort of way. 
And now it's almost, I don't want to say impossible, but it's not as, I don't know. I just, I feel like I have changed as a person. And because of that, when souls come into me, like it doesn't matter how they've died necessarily, especially when it comes to if someone has taken their own life. So it's not like I just, they don't come in the same way. Their head isn't down. Their shoulders aren't slumped. They don't give me this same sort of accountable melancholy for their actions. Not all the time. And it used to just always be like that. Now, like yesterday I talked to a, a boy who had taken his own life and I, he only told me that he passed fast. That's it. Very fast. And when I get a sort of like snap like that of a finger where like the lights just go out and it's very, very fast, almost like an old TV turning off. That could be so many things. That could be a car crash. That could be a pulmonary embolism. It could be a heart attack. It could be um, murder. So many things. But it doesn't necessarily symbolize or convey to me that someone has committed suicide. So when I asked the person that had made the reading with me, did your friend pass very quickly? She said, yes, he took his own life. And I was like, huh. Because he was just all happy joking, funny. (laughs) And, you know, I think that is what, I think what has changed about my mediumship is not necessarily my mediumship. I think it's more so I am able to be present for people in the ways that they need me during their readings. Because I think I may have matured past the point of needing souls or spirits to convey certain information to me in a way I may be judgmental about. Not that I'm judgmental about suicide. I'm not. I mean, your life is your own decision. And personally speaking, I have dealt with ideas of suicide and ideation of it. But (laughs) that's not who I am anymore. I've moved past that. And with that knowing and understanding of people who have struggled with thoughts of suicide, I I just, there's not like a shame in it, I guess, maybe, which is why souls might not come to me that way. But it's also in the sense of, I feel like sometimes when it comes to my readings, there are, like, it's easier to talk to someone that you don't know about really hard things than it is to talk to someone that you do know about really hard things that you've gone through or experienced. And I feel that sometimes when I have readings with people, it's not so much for souls to communicate with them, but for the person who makes a reading with me to communicate with someone the grief and the sorrows and ideas and thoughts that they've had around someone's passing. And sometimes a part of healing is being able to talk about it. And I think that is why souls don't necessarily tell me straight away that they've committed suicide because it's important for their loved one to be able to tell someone about it in order to process it and move forward. And that is something that I think is one of the reasons why souls don't tell me necessarily how they've died because the person that I'm talking to needs to process that is that an odd thing to say I don't know I just it's so odd to me the dynamics that souls will show me of themselves because like I don't know the most the the not the person that I want to talk about today but the person that I talked to most recently his name was AJ And he told me, like, he told me that he wanted his friend who asked about him to remember him exactly as he was, which was funny, outgoing, witty, sarcastic, creative, vivacious, (laughs) you know, things like that. And a lot of the way in which they passed and the lack of communication that the person that had made the reading with me had had with AJ was because they wanted 
their friend, the person that made a reading with me to remember them in that happy way. And that is exactly how they came through in their reading too. So I don't know. We'll see how much of this I keep, but I just, I need to like verbalize it to someone because it's just odd to me or it's, it's not odd. It's new to me to have souls come forward and not in the same way that I would have thought that they did. And it's something that I've just noticed in my readings through just more people that I've talked to. It's not something that immediately comes through as like an important detail unless it's absolutely necessary. So I don't know. I just, I wanted to share that with you all. But the biggest thing I wanted to talk about too today was what happens when people uh, take their own lives. Because uh, I talked to a woman. She is a very, very kind soul. And her father took his life very recently. And it was a gift and an honor to talk to him because he just had so, he has so much love for his daughter. His daughter is someone who was able to see him for who he was and not necessarily how he felt. And one of the questions that his daughter had and what I really wanted to share with you all today is she wanted to know if he would have to learn the things that he couldn't because he had taken his life. So like that question would go into our interpretation of, and this used to be my idea. This used to be my idea. And that's again, why I want to talk about this, how things are changing for me and my perspective and my professional professionalism and just mediumship. So like, she wanted to know if he would have to relearn things or reincarnate and learn the things as and learn the things that he did not learn in this life because he quote unquote as we would perceive it cut his own life short. And his answer very just matter of factly was no, I've learned everything I needed to in this life and there is nothing else that I would have to redo or relearn or re-go through in order to learn anything because I've learned what I needed to in this life. Now, this is the stuff that bothers me. If the answer is no, like her father said, this, this lovely person's father said, then that would mean that taking his life was a part of his soul contract or was meant to be his life because like you know everyone's gonna pass that is the only thing that we as physical human beings know at this point right is that everyone eventually is gonna die that's just how it works unless you're into like sci-fi cyborg stuff and you just want to live forever and like things like that but physically speaking we all know that that is what happens some people like my husband's great uncle he uh he passed in his sleep that was how he was supposed to go. He was the oldest of three brothers. Like my husband's grandfather, which was his uh, great uncle's middle brother, his younger brother died before him. So like, who are we to say that just because someone decides to take their own life, that that wasn't the way that they were supposed to go, which as physical people could be extremely, extremely hard to try and grasp our, our mind around. Um, I had a friend that I've talked about uh, in my last podcast and she passed from an embolism that was caused by birth control side effects. So like what, how, how are, and it's just, how are we supposed to, what is too soon and what isn't and what is meant to be and what is not meant to be. And just this man who had taken his own life, his just such matter of fact uh, way of saying like, I learned everything that I needed to was just like a bittersweet sort of thing because it did bring peace and clarity to his daughter understanding or giving her the information that no I I have completed everything that I needed to and I don't have to go back and relearn things or go back in in time and incarnate again in order to repent for the thing that I did that is not at all what he had to do so Is that comforting in a sense? Yes, but then it also brings the idea of, okay, well, in our societal understanding or human understanding, physical understanding of things, it's hard for me to think that 
that might be just the way that people are supposed to go because it is what they agree to when it comes to their soul contract. So if you don't know what a soul contract is, I don't think I even know what they are, but (laughs) as far as my current understanding of them is, when it comes to incarnation, whether you believe in reincarnation or just one incarnation, God, uh, creator, source, whatever, comes to you and says, listen, this is what I have created for you. This is your life. These are the things that you're meant to learn and then that is going to lead you to uh, spiritual enlightenment, whatever that means for you, the listener right now. And you can either agree to that soul contract and incarnate and live the life that was set out for you, or you cannot and just continue to exist as an energetic soul in heaven. So it just like, I don't know, it's just a mind trap for me (laughs) where I find solace in the idea of that souls don't put themselves in this mental turmoil of no see here and feeling all of the hurt that taking their own life has caused other people but it also I don't know it just messes with the idea of like that was someone's life that was all that they were supposed to live that was the things they were supposed to learn, but I don't know. I feel like I I don't want to accept that. Does that make sense? (laughs) That that was all that they were supposed to learn or live or do, but I don't know. What do you guys think? I feel like I'm just talking in circles here, (laughs) honestly, but I did want to share it with you all in case I just, I feel like, I feel like one of the things I've learned as a professional medium is that more than not, people know unfortunately someone who has taken their own life for various reasons and it just like I don't know I just don't think that spirituality brings a lot of comfort and peace and understanding to people which is why I love it but it just it really is just the snake eating its own tail (laughs) I don't think we're all I don't think we're supposed to know everything and that's something that I think people get frustrated with mediums about they're like well why don't you know this and why don't you know that and it's like well because we're not supposed to know everything but do we do we wish we could yeah maybe I don't know I feel like knowing everything would be too much responsibility but it's just like every time I get one little nugget of information it contradicts or It's like for the past four years, I've been looking at the table, (laughs) the proverbial spiritual table, and I thought I was seeing the whole picture, but then I have another reading or another experience, or I learn something new from like actually going out and wanting to like research a new spiritual concept that someone else has already quantified and talked about. And I'm just like, shit, I was only seeing the underside of the table, you know, like that's how I felt about like people or souls that had committed suicide. I felt that I was just going to always perceive them in a certain way and have this, I don't know, just relationship with them when I spoke to them in spirit. And my relationship and perception and way that they communicate with me has completely changed. And I feel like there is more light shining on the table of this idea when it comes to my spirituality. And I'm just like, man, now I just like, am I seeing a table? I'm just seeing more of it. I thought I was seeing all of it, but now I I just know that I'm not, you know? So I guess that's just what I wanted to share with you guys. I wanted to share with you all that your gifts change, whether you want to dub yourself a psychic, a medium, or just, you don't have to, you don't have to label yourself or anything else. Things change just like life. And I don't, my abilities are changing. The way that souls talk to me is changing. It's almost like, you know, when you meet a friend, like someone new and you have to get used to how they talk. (laughs) I feel like that is embarking on mediumship and spirituality and understanding your psychic abilities. You have to learn how the other people talk, whether that be your spirit guides or the souls that you're talking to, or if you're starting magic, if you're, if you're going down a, a, a witchcraft sort of journey, you have to learn how the physical things that you use in your spell work speak and move to you and how they communicate. And it's like, you have to get used to it. 
But then you become friends with that person and you get like jiggy with the way that they talk, you know, <laughs> and you like are finishing each other's sentences and you feel like in this really cool, just calm and collected, like easygoing, like breezy conversation, you know, and then all of a sudden something happens in your life and you feel like you change. And then the way other people start talking to you because you've changed changes. That's where I'm at right now in my mediumship. <laughs> Everything is changing. Everything's maturing and it's, it's really wild and it's cool and it's special. And I don't know everything and I don't think I will ever know everything, but I'm really sure glad for everyone that's listening that I can share with you how I'm learning and growing and changing and that it's okay to do those things and not know everything. And like one day you thought you knew a really good deal about something and the next day you're like, actually... I thought I knew a lot about this thing, but I only know this <laughs> because now I know more. So now I see how little I actually knew, you know, it's just, I don't know. It's one of those things. It's kind of like, it's like spirit had to talk to me like I was a child in order to make me feel a certain way about things. But now it's like spirit is talking to me more as like an adolescent or a young adult. And they're like, listen. You don't need to have these things presented to you in the same way because you see that that's not how those things are and that just because X has done this or Y in, in interferes or interplays with that doesn't mean anything. I feel like they really are just helping me become more of a medium, which is someone who can just receive information without having that ego. I think that I think that's what it is. I think I have less of an ego around what society sees or feels about taking your own life. And I think that's why when I talk to souls about those things, it's changing. Because it is. It's just life. Everyone goes through. I've talked to so many people that have gone through things that like I never actually thought were real. I thought that those things happened in like movies and storybooks and the hardships that they've gone through and yet they're here and I'm <laughs> freaking gifted enough or lucky enough to meet them and listen to parts of their stories. I, I both living and past. Sorry, Gatsby, my, uh, my new cat who I'll talk about more in the future is taking up space and sound. But um, yeah, I've just... I don't know. I feel like I'm spirit is, has been helping me to mature so that I can be the person that people need both physically and spiritually. And that's cool. So I hope that some bit of this rambling gave you guys a new perspective about things. And if you have questions about what I just talked about, please Put them in the comments below if you're listening on the Metapsychics Extras YouTube channel or uh, leave an Apple podcast review if you so choose because both of those things help me immensely. Plus, if you give me like specific questions and I can give you more specific answers, I just wanted to talk about the things that I've learned with changing my mediumship and the way souls that have taken their own lives present to me, how I feel about it, and the nugget of information that this this lovely soul of of this man told me about of like, no, I don't have to go through anything else because I learned everything that I needed to and I am in heaven. So yeah. All right. Thank you all for listening to this Sunday's episode. If you, if you want, I have availability for August <laughs> for August readings. And uh, yeah, until next time, thanks so much for listening and peace.